Hello, I am Bentham and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program and today we're going to do a post-commentary episode because I got a lot of missions done um, and uh, it'll be boring to watch the, them all in, in, com in their complete form so I've got them going at four times speed so we can have a, a, a quick look at what I did. So this mission here is, the, um, is a rescue craft. You, s you remember in the last episode we accepted a contract to rescue I believe Gene Den Kerman who was somehow in orbit so um, we're sending up a rescue craft to save them, manned by Jeb, who at the moment I think has done all our missions. Um, and uh, you can see him there just screaming over the um, the uh, the space center at two kilometers a second. So we're going to go up and meet him and bring him back home. And you can see I've, I've managed to time it fairly right, not quite, he's a little bit behind us. So um, I sort out my orbit and try and get a nice close encounter. And we get it up to... Um, 2.4 kilometers, so that it's that's just enough to to be near enough for him to activate. But we we want to get close if we can. And in fact, the um, the encounter on the other side ends up being um, closer, so I end up swinging around to there, and that's a, a an encounter of 1.1 kilometers. So here we go and um, try to look around, trying to find him. There he is, and he flies past us. So I I um, slow us down, get us moving towards him again. Um, but the thing is, we're very low on fuel in this particular rocket, so what I decide to do is let Gene Dunn finish off the rendezvous, so I swap over to him and use his EVA pack to bring us in. Uh, there, we're down to under 200 meters, and then within 100, and then we just have to sort of... It's a bit more difficult because there's, there's no nav ball to use, you have to do it by eye, which is why you need to be quite close to do it. And also, you need to be within 2.5 kilometers for Gene Dunn to, to be usable otherwise you could cheat and, and get him to just bring himself home though it may injure him a bit anyway we've got him inside and it, it's a two pod um, ship in case you hadn't noticed it's just two pods some parachutes and then some um, strut things to act as as cheap landing legs and uh, or whatever so now in we come um, screaming through the atmosphere flying over Kerbin's largest crater and it's the only noticeable crater really um, using the SAS to stabilize it, you can see it flashing on and off there, epilepsy warning and all that. And and then the flames begin and, and hopefully don't destroy it, of course they can't yet. That's probably a feature that's being added fairly soon, because it is sort of... Well, I don't know, it, it, could, it could ruin a lot of people's games actually having it so that flames destroy you, so it may just be a setting you can switch on and off. But anyway, here we go with far too many parachutes for what, what we're carrying, but it's fine because we'll recover them. And there we are, landed on our struts, do a little bit of science, and then back to the base. So there's um, some reputation, so on, and a lot of money for completing that mission. So the next rocket that I launch is the Orbiter 2. So that this is, um, it's basically, it's got the same launch system, um, and the only real difference is that instead of a second pod, there's a bunch of science equipment. So the purpose of this mission is simply to go into orbit and then do as much science as it possibly can. Um, and that means that we can advance our science, as you probably guessed, because we've earned all our money now doing these various missions. It's time to actually um, spend some time and money to get some science. Um, so it's a pretty normal launch. Everything goes as usual. I burn up to um, 9 kilometers, turn to turn 45 degrees, uh, which is finished by 10 kilometers, and then I keep pointing that way till the apoapsis gets to 50 kilometers and then once I'm there I turn onto the horizon so until the apoapsis gets up to 75 then I fly up to the apoapsis and then do a horizontal burn to circularize the orbit so that's my particular method and I'm sure there are more efficient methods and there'll be something that I'm doing wrong with them but it's it's good enough it's it served me well that particular method and it's, it's really simple to carry out so anyway what we're now we've we've done all the um the, we've used all the scientific equipment but the um, the thing that we're going to put the most time into in this mission is EVA science. I tried to get into to the pod there and had a bit of trouble because I'm sort of facing the wrong way for it. So he jumps around to grab the ladder and then the, sh the sudden sort of rotation sends him flying. So what I do is I, I position the craft point pointing north so that I can actually get in easy easily enough. And the reason I keep hopping out and in is that EVA science is different where over each biome. So you can just keep hopping out and hopping in and transmitting all of this... Um, all this science and um, get it for every biome that you fly over so I think I've um, ended up with um, yes I've ended up with uh, highlands grasslands shores maybe not I don't know if I got mountains and also sea and then I go over the dark side to, to where the huge desert is managed to get some desert desert EVA science as well 
and then it's time to go home so we swing around a bit more and then we point retrograde do a little burn just to get us gently approaching the ground and what we're aiming for is this huge patch of, of land here like the, the biggest continent on in on the planet or whatever um, we decided to burn some extra seeing as we are over it already we might as well burn it because there's no reason not doing it's just gonna burn up in the atmosphere well it's it's gonna get 2.5 kilometers away and disappear is how it's gonna work but whatever and the reason that I'm landing on land is that um, of course uh, when you land on the sea uh, there's more chance of things being destroyed because you, like I have landing legs here, so when I land on the ground, the landing legs will stop me and they'll take all of the force. But if I land in the sea, the landing legs will of course go straight through. And you can see we're actually landing on a slope here. I have to tilt myself forward and land on my front so that we don't start falling over and just tumbling down and exploding everywhere. Which is a danger of landing on land, and that's probably one of the reasons that NASA lands on the sea. There's various reasons, like not killing people and so on. Anyway, we're over into the into our next mission now. And you can see this is a lot bigger, and it uses a few parts that we got from the science that I just gained from the Orbiter 2. I didn't show you me getting the science. It was fairly simple. I went into the science menu and and bought some science, and it was very structural bits like the 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 tricoupler or whatever it's called. And um, this mission is the Moon Orbiter 1. So what's this? What this is going to do is go into Moon orbit, get as low as it it can without um, well well with the fuel that it's got. And then it's going to do it's just going to do a bunch of science and come back, and we're going to get even more science. And hopefully, once we've um, once we combine the science from both this mission and the Orbiter Two, we will have enough to um, to actually do a proper moon mission where we land on the moon. Because of course, I've been spending more time doing doing money-based missions and not focusing so much on the science. And that's a an interesting new aspect of this update, where suddenly you're doing missions solely for money and you sort of forget about doing the science for a bit and then you have to switch over to science and use up all the money you've earned or a, s a tiny fraction of it really because so far I've not had any money problems in games that I've played anyway I thought I'd give you a nice cinematic view of the sun rising seeing as it was happening isn't it beautiful if, if a little fast it like suddenly exploding into into your vision because it's going at four times speed um, I just thought it would be nice to show you that for whatever reason um, so now we go to the moon, but it's not quite the normal method that I use. Usually, and you saw there, that that was the sort of uh, system I'd normally do. But this time I'm going for a free return trajectory, meaning that um, once we've done our burn to go to the moon, we don't need to do any more burns, and we will go to the moon, um, pass over its surface, and then carry on and land back on Kerbin, because we'll go back into the atmosphere. It takes a bit more fuel than a, than a normal moon flyby mission, but then you don't need to use any fuel to actually get your periapsis below Kerbin's atmosphere again so it's it's um, a fairly safe way to do it and it's a, a method that NASA uses so it's, it's got to have some merit so anyway I get the the burn done um, I have to do some fine-tuning because it's a bit of a delicate maneuver to get the um, the periapsis in the right place after flying past the moon I end up overdoing it and have to go back again you see just gently tapping it into place so we've now got the the periapsis at about 30 kilometers when we come back so off we go, and a, a bit more cinematicness with the um, with the uh, Kerbin eclipsing the sun. You can see that the light is sort of coming around the edges of Kerbin due to like gravity in the atmosphere, and all sorts of cool things like that. And then the sun pops out the other side again. So that's two sunrises you've seen in the past like two minutes. Um, but anyway, it's time to to go off to the moon. So speed ourselves up, fly over, and the way this one works is, is um, we we sort of have the moon catch up with us and then fling us up a bit. So there we go. You can see the trajectory, it's quite interesting. Um, we don't get that low on it because I was being careful, didn't want to use up too much fuel. In the end we did have, actually have quite a lot left, so I made, maybe could have got a better burn that brought us closer. As it is, we're going to have to just use um, high over the moon science, but that's alright. There's still plenty of, of uh, science research points to be gained from it. So I do as much as I can there. Um, then just go to the, the very lowest point, see if I, I'm, I happen to be dipping within any sort of boundary, but I'm not. Anyway, flying up um, away from the moon, we end up even higher than the, the moon relative to Kerbin, so I decided to do some um, high over Kerbin science while, while I have the opportunity and, and the remaining science equipment. And then once that's done, it's time to swing back down towards Kerbin, which starts off slowly at first, of course, because we're going at barely any speed at all, but as we get closer and closer, the gravity increases dramatically and we're suddenly flying in really fast and I think we're going at something like 30 uh, well not 30, 3 kilometers a second now, something like that, but anyway um, 
get ourselves pointing the right way using the SAS to sort of even out our um, trajectory and then there's a lot of flames a very high amount because we're coming from so high up and it burns a lot longer than it usually does and it takes a long time for us actually to um, get our periapsis to well get our apoapsis even to drop below the atmosphere anyway you can see we're actually we passed over the space center there unfortunately I didn't realize it quickly enough so I didn't have a chance to um, slow us down and, and land us there so we'll be landing beyond it and also we'll be landing in the sea which goes back to what I was saying before because um, there's a chance that the landing legs will go straight through the water and then everything else will hit the water too and it's always a worry that it won't it, it, it won't stand the the collision and get destroyed by the impact with the water but we've got a lot of parachutes on this three of them so that should hopefully be enough so all we have to we're just gonna have to see what happens we drop in it looks all right do a quick spin with the the craft to check that everything's still in place it looks like it is so we're alright there and it's time to recover the craft and we have 250 science as well as a bunch of money and, and reputation which we'll get to make use of in future missions. So now I shall say goodbye, thank you for watching and I shall see you next time.